on the GameBridge Ball State Cardinals Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome to This Week in Ball State Sports, a Ball State Athletics podcast, highlighting the Cardinals athletics teams and administration each week. Presented by GameBridge, here's the voice of the Cardinals, your host, Mick Tidrow. Hey, Cardinal fans, welcome into episode six of season two of This Week in Ball State Sports. Fun show on tap. Director of Athletics Jeff Mitchell comes back after a couple of weeks away from the podcast. And then Brady Sally, the head women's basketball coach, also joining the podcast with head football coach Mike New. Jeff, it's great to have you back. Uh, we almost Wally pipped you here and had you replaced by uh, Dr. Lindsey Blom and Ryan Hillenberg from, from Down in Compliance, but uh, the Iron Man's back. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Mick. Uh, great reference, uh, and uh, yes, glad not to be Wally pipped. You gave me the idea, though. You walked into our office and you said, hey, th- this is this is good, and you said, I expected Texas weekend to get back on the pod. Like, it, it was a pretty firm statement. Well, I was concerned about it. <laughs> You know, being absent for a couple of weeks, I was on the road traveling and grateful for, for my colleagues, Dr. Lindsey Blom and Ryan Ellenberg, for pinch hitting for me. And I'm, I'm glad that's all it was, was it was a pinch hit as opposed to a, a complete substitution and uh, not being uh, Wally Pipped. It, uh, the, for those that uh, are interested in learning more about the reference, you can Google Wally Pipp and see what Mick and I are talking about. And just know that Lou Gehrig started a streak of 2,100 games <laughs> after Wally Pip was sat. So Dr. Blom and Ryan almost went on a generational run here. <laughs> but anyway, sure. Jeff, it's, it's good to have you back in the seat. Um, you, you've been gone for the, the couple weeks with everything going on in, in the college landscape. But um, one thing that's been happening here in Ball State Athletics, you were at the JMU Ball State football game. Just want to start there. Uh, overall thoughts about where football's at right now. Yeah, I, we, we've got to win a ball game, and they're excited about uh, the opportunity that we have ahead of us this weekend. And uh, I talked to a couple of the student athletes uh, on uh, Tuesday, and they said they had their best practice uh, of the year. Uh, and so that's encouraging as they go into this weekend's home game against Western Michigan. Glad to be back at Schumann Stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, uh, you know, we need to win a ball game. And uh, I think our coaches understand that, and, and uh, our student athletes. Uh, want to win a ball game and uh, look for a high level of competitiveness as we approach this Saturday. It's supposed to be a beautiful day mm-hmm. this weekend, and uh, or a beautiful day on Saturday of this weekend. And uh, looking forward to uh, college football in Muncie, Indiana. Isn't it nice to have a game after three straight on the road here at Schumann Stadium? It, it really is. It's always great to play at home, and uh, particularly this time of year as the calendar flips to October. And uh, looking forward to uh, the remainder of uh, the, the MAC schedule. We've got one uh, more non-conference game to go when we're on the road at Vanderbilt, uh, but uh, we're a third of the way through the season. And uh, looking forward to teeing it up this weekend against uh, Western. So it's family and community weekend. Jeff, you had a chance to experience that last year for the first time here at Ball State. What did you notice about this weekend of football and community membership coming together? Well, I think it was just a great way to celebrate Ball State, great way to celebrate Ball State football. We know we'll continue to celebrate the 100th season of Ball State football, and we'll continue to do that uh, in a variety of ways in game uh, and uh, certainly around the game. Looking forward to the Hall of Fame on Friday as well. Let's go down that road. Hall of Fame celebrating six individuals and one team in the 1999 baseball team. Uh, Lenise Gordon, Jenny Gilbert from softball. So that's cross country track and field with Lenise. Jenny Gilbert with softball, the 1999 baseball team. Um, Megan Hammonds from women's volleyball. Go down the list here. Dave Garo from swimming and diving. Um, in addition to two football players with Keith Winning and Sean Baker, really loaded class for Ball State Athletics that crosses a ton of different sports. That's really good to see that type of variety. It, it is, and again, it's a testament to the quality student athlete that Ball State attracts, and it goes back for multiple years. And uh, for me, as I read about these inductees and learn about them, it, it's just fun for me to put uh, names to faces or will be as I meet them th- this coming weekend uh, and to celebrate them as uh, as Ball State Cardinals. Um, it, and for me, it's gratifying to understand that the legacy of success that Ball State presents through its athletics program is very real. And uh, it's important that we celebrate the accomplishments of these talented individuals and it's important that we celebrate them so that our current student athletes understand 
what came before them mm-hmm. and uh, the foundation that's been laid for them. So anytime there's a Hall of Fame ceremony, I get really excited. You know, we are back now on schedule with doing Hall right. of Fame in the fall, which is, I think, where most people are accustomed to doing it. We had a, a spring induction this past year, and I think we'd gotten a little off rhythm due to COVID and it persisted for a little while and now we decided that we were going to get back uh, into a rhythm where we celebrate a Hall of Fame class during football season in the fall. So really looking forward to this weekend, uh, Friday night and uh, yeah, it'll be fun to have those former Cardinals back on campus. It'll be fun. It'll be in Worthen Arena this year instead of the Alumni Center. So a little bit different of a setup uh, and just looking at all the athletes that are being inducted. I think it's always special when you have a whole team that gets inducted as well. A 1990 baseball team won over 40 games like that's impressive by itself um, all of these these Hall of Famers that are about to be inducted uh, incredible accomplishments um, what I love too is the consistency piece that you see from all of these athletes it's not just in, in baseball's case of course you're celebrating one team but a consistency through a whole season like these athletes worked great their entire careers at Ball State and you, you've been around collegiate athletics to know how tough that is to do that for more than a couple of years to have that consistency across the board from these athletes yeah it, it's it's really impressive it, being a college athlete's hard uh, there's a lot of things that uh, can help make the student athlete be successful there's also a lot of things that can get in the way and uh, surely as these student athletes and that team that is being inducted will tell you is that there were hurdles and there were obstacles and uh, they were successful in navigating uh, around below uh, above whatever those obstacles may have been uh, to be successful and I'm sure that'll be a constant theme that we hear over the course of the evening you know the format's going to be neat where you're going to interview the inductees and have them share some stories mm-hmm. from their time as uh, a student athlete here at Ball State uh, and so I'm really looking forward to what they have to say and my guess is that it'll be the very thing that uh, we uh, stress to our current student athletes which is you know show up every day prepare and then enjoy the moment and and, and it'll probably be a variation of that um, as they recount their time here and hopefully uh, we hear some uh, some pretty inspirational stories looking forward to it there's always always inspirational stories we, we can go back several years to see um, some of those from the Hall of Fame but really excited for what Friday brings at the Hall of Fame ceremony and then football on Saturday uh, to cap off that weekend Jeff Mitchell director of athletics joining us here on this week in Ball State Sports Jeff basketball season's under 40 days away now too uh, it's uh as we're recording this October 1st and as of this dropping uh, October 2nd for basketball, that's a month away until the Max Sunbelt Challenge happens. Like it's right around the corner. Yeah, it's here, and it's always exciting as the calendar flips month by month. But it just means something different's coming. And uh, October registers with me basketball season. So uh, our teams have been in their practice windows now for the championship segment uh, for about a week and a half. Uh, actually, I guess it's it's oh, about two weeks now, and. Uh, it, they're they're in it. The practices are intense. Uh, they're gearing up for the season. Really looking forward to watching both our men's and women's basketball teams compete this year. That Max Sunbelt Challenge, as you reference, is uh, opening the season for both programs. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to uh, seeing what those guys and and uh, women can do. Uh, Coach Selly. Uh, I think he's really excited about his team. Coach Lewis, as we talked last week on the podcast, is excited about his team. And I, I would encourage our fans to get excited too and to be curious about what we're doing. And so get your season tickets and uh, look at the schedules and get in Worthen Arena and let's uh, cheer on our Cardinals because we really do have a great arena and a home court advantage and really excited about basketball this year. So there have been some fan submitted questions just about the reseeding situation. Where does that stand for basketball season being about a month away? Yeah, so we are almost complete with the the reseed process. Uh, Tickets are are on sale or will be on sale. We'll do the the, the season ticket packages, the single game tickets will go on sale uh, later in the month. Uh, But uh, people have been called or should have been called. Um, I think maybe this is the last week where we're trying to get uh, 
to the end of the list. It's been relatively smooth, and uh, I want to express my appreciation to our fan base for uh, the patience that uh, they've displayed. I realize that not everybody has been pleased, uh, but it, it was something that we had to do. It was a necessity from a safety standpoint, and what it does is position us well from a priority points standpoint to honor our fans that have been loyal to uh, provide an opportunity for other fans to increase their stock on that list but more importantly it just provides some transparency to the process Mm -hmm. and uh, it it makes it attractive to be a season ticket holder and to donate to the Cardinal Varsity Club but we need our fans support and uh, as We want to be more competitive in a variety of our sports as our landscape changes and uh, as we chart a path for what athletics at the college level looks like in the coming decade. uh, One constant is that we're going to need the support of our fans and we want to be open and transparent about what we're doing. We want to provide our fans with enjoyable entertainment. We want to have our fans see quality products. Uh, across our platform and uh, from time to time uh, that that means that uh, we're going to to ask for help and um, the more support we can get from our our fans uh, it, it means the more we're supporting our student athletes and putting quality teams out there that make our fan base proud and that's easy to cheer for Jeff Mitchell joining us here on This Week in Ball State Sports. Jeff, anything else you want Ball State fans to know or any talking points you want to share with us before we let you go? We are in the middle of uh, a a crazy fall season across the board with all our sports competing with our non-championship teams in the middle of practice. And, uh, you know, we're playing some fall games in baseball and and softball. And those games that uh, will be uh, at our home venues, they're open to the public to come watch and take advantage of some of this great weather that we're having right now and uh, watch the Cardinals play. Uh, But, uh, again, stressing basketball right now as we flip to to October, uh, you know, as you uh, look at the schedules, go ahead and get those season tickets. And and we look forward to seeing everybody at Schumann Stadium for football this weekend. Yep, just check out BallStateSports.com, find the ticket links, the deposits for season tickets for basketball. It's not too late, of course, to get football tickets as well, especially for family weekend and homecoming, the next two home events for football. Well, Jeff, we really appreciate you joining the podcast again. Thank you so much. Thank you, Matt. Go Cards. Fly, Cardinals, fly. Savanta scampers. He has open daylight, jumps toward the end zone, barrels in, and he is in. Every play, every touchdown. Every Cardinal win is here. Barrels toward the end zone, and it's a Cardinals touchdown. The Cardinals host Western Michigan. Join us Saturday, October 5th. Our coverage begins at 1. Welcome back inside this week in Ball State sports and basketball season's just over a month away. So we have head coach Brady Sally from the Ball State women's basketball team. Uh, coach, when I say that, what, what comes through your mind? We're less than... Uh, 40 days away to get this thing going you know it, it's crazy forever um this time of the year has been my favorite for so many reasons you know the the weather starting to change and you know the fire pits at night those kind of things uh when you're when you're in the midwest everybody knows that vibe um you know it's it's football's rocking and rolling you know uh, saturdays and sundays are, are great right now um my commanders are maybe the best team in the nfl just saying that that's a statement but we haven't heard in a long time but Jaden daniels and crew are doing a pretty good job i'm telling you i'm loving it so um and you know me i love yapping about it so that's the best part um hey, this is a podcast so you can yap there you go uh, but you know too with that comes like man it's time for basketball uh and and i've always there's always been that kind of euphoric moment uh, around the first day of practice where you're driving in early in the morning, the sun's not even up yet, um, and and you just know it, it's here, it's time. And, and that, that for me, in 30 years of doing this, has just never changed. And um, I get chills thinking about it. It's, it's for basketball junkies, um, it, there's nothing better, and, and we're right smack dab in the middle of it. When you take a 30,000-foot view of what the first week or so has been like at practice, how would you assess that? 
Yeah, you know, um, we've had some really good workouts. Um, the first thing that jumps off the page to me um, is how just comfortable this team is with physicality. Um, our practices are blood baths um, and, and not out of control. Um, we've just got bigger and faster and stronger, and it, it is – physical in almost everything we do and so uh and and it's not from some glorious coaching technique um it, it's just kind of who they are uh and you know at first uh in the summer and and early in the fall um some players had to get used to it but you're seeing them be comfortable with uncomfortable which is always something you're looking for as a coach so that's that's probably the first thing um we we've been we we've had some good workouts ironically our first official practice wasn't um and i think they psyched themselves out with going from you know an hour workout a few times a week uh to all of a sudden I'm in the weight room for an hour i'm going to be on the court for two and a half to three hours in a full full like full four hour um, workout and and um, I, I think they got in their own heads and they didn't trust their bodies that that they were ready for it uh, once we kind of got through that it's been lights out um, and uh, you know we we've had the wealth has been spread um, you know it's it's as good as Ali Becky is it's not we're just not dependent on her um, I, I love our incoming talent um and then clearly we have experience through the roof so um it's all shaping up really really well um you know relatively healthy right now um you know we had one get banged up on on day one but we got some good news back on her and and so um yeah you know it's uh it's full steam ahead right now and and you know we we've got a little bit left to do to get us to the point where we can really function up and down holistically in, in terms of playing a game, uh, but we're not far from it. There's a lot of areas that I could go into with what you just said. I think I want to start off with the physicality part. Coach, you've always been known to have those physical tough teams and pride yourself on defense to offense. When you put this team together and having to bring in so many new pieces, how did each of those new pieces kind of fit into that physicality piece that you want to see? Well, I think if, if we rewind all the way to the end of last year, you know, we're 28 and six and have a heck of a year. And um, the way I'm wired, I concentrate way more on the six than the 28 and you start dissecting those six um how do we lose who do we lose to what was the situation what did it come down to watch those games over and over um you know and, and you start with the the notre dame and the yukon losses and and clearly there was a difference in humans that, that were on the court we understood that part of it um and thank goodness i'm a way better coach than gino or it might have been worse than than what we thought um hopefully everybody's laughing out there right now um but um but then you know after that uh you you get into the conference and and um you know uh clearly we won a ton of games and and you go into the northern illinois loss um where we just couldn't make a shot and, and i'm not sure that um any humans or anything we would have done different um could have helped it was just one of those nights um but but clearly had plenty of chances and you kind of um move on from that one but you know you you look at the toledo um loss you look at the kent state loss in, in the tournament um and I think we lost the game in the paint. I think we lost the game rebounding the ball. I think we lost the game with physicality. And um, I think in those two losses, um, you know, one probably um, flipped the regular season championship to Toledo's favor. The other one clearly knocked us out of the tournament and Kent State went on and won it. Um, but it was easy to identify whether those games were won and lost. And, and so um, – we wanted to take care of that, um, and boy, did we ever. And uh, we brought in some real size, some real talent, um, along with what we have coming back. And and so um, wanted to make sure we could check all the boxes. Um, as good as we were last year, I love playing with that team. I love coaching that team. Um, I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Um, 
but you know, you, you got to diagnose and we certainly diagnosed and, and, um, I think that part of it's not going to be an issue moving forward. You went out and got physicality with experience in the college game at a high level. How much do you think that impacts? Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's what you got to do now, you know, I, so I, I equate it to, uh, a, a trip I just took to Europe recruiting. Um, so I was in um, Germany, Luxembourg, and France, right? And so one of the highlights, other than visiting with some really talented kids, um, was driving on the Autobahn. Uh, anybody that knows me, like, I'm I probably, if I wouldn't have been a coach, would have been like maybe a Hall of Fame NASCAR driver. Um, so, you know, but my, my point is, like, when you get on that road, you 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 got to be ready. And and you got to be, like, ready to drive. You need to have a lead foot. You, well, and, and it's, it's not even there. It's not even a lead foot. It's necessity, right? Um, and so that, like, with this team, it's kind of, okay, like, you know, when, when you're recruiting now, uh, you have to be old. You, your team has to be veteran. Um, because if they're not as talented as some freshmen might be coming in, they're playing against 22 and 23 year olds every single night. So, um, I, I want to have talented freshmen coming in the door and we do. Um, but man, you better have five to six to seven juniors and seniors that have been there, have done it, understand the rigors. Um, and, and when, you know, you're, you're out there competing at the level that we compete. Um, that experience has to match up with who you're competing against. And, and I think we did that with this recruiting class. And you get to bring that recruiting class together with the experience that you already have had from the core group of players that comes back. How does that configure in your head to make this whole thing work when you have experience that you're going out and getting and experience that you're bringing back at a high level? Yeah, you know, we, we made a quick decision that we we wanted to capitalize on these four seniors that, that were coming back. So, you know, Allie Becky and Maddie and, and uh, Alex Richard, Marie Kiefer, those kids um, – in a in a very weird time in college athletics made the choice to stay loyal um and and all had opportunities all had um you know the buzzard circling and and probably let's face it um all probably got tampered with at some point um and they they made the choice to stay loyal to ball state in this program and and so um i I wanted not only because they're really talented and and it's the right thing to do, but like those kids deserve the best team they can play on. And so um, that was what the whole mindset was. I I didn't care about putting six in the senior class with a couple transfers and, and now we're going to have to replace those. Like it, it was all about this team and what we could capitalize on but it all starts with those kids talent um their want to and um they, they deserve nothing more than to go out on top and um there's some of the uh they're they're for the most special kids that have ever come through because of what they had to um kind of go through in terms of all the different rules and changes and covid years and i mean you know um they're the first class that, that didn't get that covid year after all that stuff started um you know the nil stuff came in the transfer portal changed and um you know in, in their career college athletics has shifted almost 180 um but the best thing i can say about them is in all of those shifts and all of those changes those kids have kept their nose to the grindstone and said, let's go win for Ball State. And if our fans um, didn't know it and didn't already appreciate it, there's a big reason to come out and watch us play this year. You went down the path of saying that you're all in this year. You wanted to bring veteran players to put on top of the roster that you have. Of course, you have talented freshmen that are coming in. But it's a different landscape. You said it. You can go out and – get four seniors from the portal and have eight on your team and then retool and go next year and go refill that roster with seven, eight upper class. Um, So it sounds like 
you want to try and build from from that standpoint, especially this year? I know you have to think long term, but you also have to go short term almost every day. It sounds like that logic is starting to take shape in this program. Well, it again, it, it has to. Um, you know, I, I think maybe maybe as important as you know trying to be old. Um, I, I think you also have to look at where is your talent in in your team. You know, is it you know with this year's group. We've we're very talented in that senior class, and so let's put like talent around them. Um, you know, in the future, maybe that talent is in your sophomore and junior class, and and you want to plug in some pieces around that. So I think, you know, it's it's going to be a constant um, puzzle that that you're trying to put together. And recruiting has always been a little bit of that, um, but you know, it's gone from. Um, a, a puzzle for four-year-olds to eight-year-olds to a puzzle that is like a big white sheet with a black dot and you're trying to put that together with a million pieces and i don't know about you but i was never good at puzzles so hey i don't have the patience for them so um but you know it's uh it, the way you think about recruiting has certainly changed uh, there's no doubt about it and you know you you can either bemoan it or you can um adjust and and figure out the best way um at the university you're at to attack it and that's what we've done here i love that answer finding the best way to to attack what the landscape is and how it's changing uh, coach before we let you go here on this week in ball state sports the full schedule's not out waiting on a few things uh, from a non-conference standpoint but from what you can share um what excites you about the schedule well first off uh we you know we've got seven home games in the non-conference so 16 home games this year that our fans can come out uh get behind this group and that was another part of the schedules i, I wanted i wanted the fans to be able to see this group a lot and so we we were really adamant about getting those home games and um so that that's a big part of it clearly we start off the year november 4th with old dominion and the Sun Belt challenge um old dominion's a year in and year out a really good program um, we've got i think some of the best mids in the country coming here um to, to play I, th- I think uh it, it's going to be an exciting schedule that way clearly everybody's seen the bahamas tournament uh the battle for atlantis the first we're, we're the first program men or women in this league to be invited to the battle for atlantis um so we we take a lot of pride in that we think we've earned it um it is the creme de la creme of thanksgiving tournaments Let, let's face it uh everybody knows the the blue tent around the ballroom in Atlantis and and they've seen the men play there for years and um so we're excited to to tip off against North Carolina uh in in that one and and represent uh at a high level but I think everybody's going to love the schedule when they see it come out um I, I think uh you know we we get a chance to get some kids a little bit closer to home in this region uh with some away games um but you know we got to go out there and and build a resume with that non-conference schedule and uh, and then get in the league and go to work hey we appreciate you we can't wait to see the season tip off uh, in about 30 plus days here coach appreciate you thank you all right appreciate you fly cardinals fly Savanta scampers he has open daylight jumps toward the end zone barrels in and he is in every play every touchdown Every Cardinal win is here. Barrels toward the end zone, and it's a Cardinals touchdown. The Cardinals host Western Michigan. Join us Saturday, October 5th. Our coverage begins at 1. We're here with head football coach Mike New joining the show. Coach, really appreciate your time as always as we get set for family weekend against Western Michigan and back into some Mid-American Conference play. Yeah, appreciate you having me. So let's start there, Coach. Uh, family weekend coming up. Finally a home game, too. Been on the road for three straight weeks um, and now get back into conference. But uh, how excited are you to be back at home and playing in front of a family weekend crowd? Yeah, no question. I'm excited, obviously, to be back home. You know, we only got uh, five games this year at Schumann Stadium, so it's certainly nice to be back home after three weeks on the road. I uh, wish we were coming back home with a little bit more momentum, but uh, obviously excited to turn the page. We're back in conference. First uh, conference game here uh, against Western Michigan. Me- 
once against Western Michigan. Uh, so excited for our guys, you know, excited for our guys to be able to be around their families and, and for us too, you know, it's, we, a lot of our, what we do here is built on family. And so to be able to have that uh, weekend here uh, where we return back from being on the road for so long is exciting. Head Coach Mike, you're joining us here on this week in Ball State Sports. Mike, you said wanted to come back with a little bit of momentum. Uh, just looking at that James Madison game real fast when you turned on the tape for a watch through, what jumped out to you? Yeah, disappointing day, obviously. You know, it was a tough start to the game. They took the opening kickoff, won 11 plays, scored a touchdown there. Our first possession, we had had some good things going. We crossed midfield, uh, then had a throw from Caden a little bit too high there that went off the fingers uh, of Christian Abney, and, and their guy made a great play on that. And, you know, obviously, I really feel like from there, I kind of mentioned it in my post game remarks. I feel like guys started to press a little bit to maybe force the issue. And when you play uh, with that kind of mindset or you play with that kind of uh, pressure that you place on yourself, then unchar- uncharacteristic mistakes start to happen. Uh, guys start to get themselves out of position. You're trying to make up for a mistake that you had earlier in the game, and it's tough to play the game uh, with that type of mindset. So, um, you know, you can't lose a turnover battle. Obviously, we lost a turnover battle there. Uh, they executed in situational football uh, extre- extremely well. We didn't execute, obviously, on our end well enough. Um, but we got to regroup here. We got to turn the page. You know, when you fall off the horse, you got to get back up and get back on and you know obviously um there's a lot to play for here we're back to mac play this is a crazy conference half the teams in our conference right now are basically in the same position we are um and so it's 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 back to mac play and it's it's a wide open deal and we got to really just approach it one game season and and go attack it mike you mentioned pressing and uncharacteristic plays from your team from a coaching staff perspective, how do you help that going into this week? Yeah, I think my big focus is trying to make sure I build confidence starting from the first work day tomorrow. You know, I got to show some of the things that we've done throughout the course of games, some of the same exact calls that have been made defensively, some of the same exact calls that have been made offensively through four weeks and show them being executed at a high level and what it looks like. And so um, we're capable. And when you do that, and when you, and you know, the hardest thing to do is stay committed to doing your job one play at a time for four quarters because naturally when you're in practice you really don't have adversity for lack of a better word you practice uh, you're going to continue to run the play until you get it correct you know in the in the game and you're in that situation you got you got one play and you got to move on to the next one no matter what the result was and so to me it's all about focusing on making sure I, I build our confidence uh, as much as I possibly can this week knowing that man, we, we've done we've executed some of these same calls at a high level and it's it, it looks great when you have 11 guys doing their job so uh don't want to make it anything more than it needs to be, but yet at the same time, we got to take time to to make sure our guys uh, see with their own eyes everybody in that team meeting room, seeing their teammates execute, um, you know, calls at a high level. Head coach Mike New joining us on this week in Ball State Sports, talking some football, rearview mirror with James Madison, and then also previewing Western Michigan. Um, and we also have the Ball State Athletics Hall of Fame coming up this weekend as well. We'll get to that with Coach New because two football players uh, being inducted into the class of 2024 in Sean Baker and Keith Winning. So definitely want to get Coach New's thoughts on that coming up here. Uh, but Coach, when you when you turn on from an offensive perspective tape, you said a little bit of pressing. Um, those are pretty easily corrected things, right? Because you mentioned it the week prior from an offensive standpoint. Offense was clicking. So let's just turn on the tape and say, hey, guys, we have the confidence to go back and do that. There's no question. Obviously, when when we when we perform the way we're capable of performing, we feel strongly we can go down the field on anybody and score points. Uh, now, obviously, when, when one mistake happens, uh, that can't lead to another mistake. So it's really just making sure our guys uh, try to keep the approach simple, try to keep uh, you know the one play at a time mentality front and center and making sure guys are doing that. And when we get that done, man, it's, it's, it's fun to watch us click from an offensive standpoint. But naturally, you know, Caden had a couple throws the other day that he probably four uh, that he didn't force, uh, you know, when things are are going the way they need to go. So obviously, we got to do a good job of. Uh, making sure we get him settled into the game, make sure we uh, do a great job around him, making plays when we have an opportunity, and uh, we'll get that done. Our guys will respond, have come back to work here, and we'll, we'll get that done. Tanner had a very explosive first half. He had a, a catch and run now where he caught it four yards deep and then broke one tackle, busted by another guy, and then the offense just kept moving from there from, from his perspective in the first half. Did they do something different?
effort in the second half to kind of limit what he was able to do? No, I don't think it was a matter of anything they did in the second half. You know, he had a couple catches there, and he got dinged up a little bit. Nothing that's going to keep him out or anything like that, but it was enough. You know, when 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 the deficit got the way that it was the other day, we just needed to be smart there. And so a little bit of it was on our end of it, like, hey, let's, let's make sure, man, knowing what the score is, let's get him out. Let's make sure we're smart uh, with what we're asking him to do. And so uh, it had to do with that more than anything else, but but he's a weapon. Uh, he's one of those guys that, um, you know, he's done such a great job in getting him involved in so many different ways and got an unbelievable catch radius, got great uh, great size, and so those are things that we need to keep building on. Which looking at Western Michigan, when you turn on the tape, what do you see from them? Well, they lost a tough one on the road to Marshall. Uh, obviously, their first two games of the season, non-conference against Wisconsin and Ohio State, obviously those are tough, you know, playing two great opponents like that. They had a huge explosive day offensively, almost 700 yards against Bethune-Cookman. Um, and, and and really both, you know, obviously running game-wise, they were over 300, almost 350 yards, if I'm not mistaken, rushing uh, that night and, and and had a lot of explosive plays through the year in the passing game. Um, and obviously Hayden Wolf, the quarterback, um, you know, has been in our conference now. He's played a lot of college football throughout his career before he transferred uh, to Western Michigan. Uh, and they were in it. You know, they had a great Great game the other day. They had a chance uh, at the end. They had a, you know, they were in the red zone. They were down obviously seven to Marshall, and they had a chance on fourth down there. Uh, just weren't able to convert uh, in that situation. So uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, a Western team coming in here. This will be their first conference game, so they're looking forward uh, to turning the page, focusing all their attention uh, on their first conference game, executing at a high level. But um, it, it comes down to us, you know, just like I talked about last week, and you know that's where the preparation all starts, making sure. Uh, we're where we need to be to go execute at a high level. Mike, you talk about from an offensive standpoint what Western Michigan has when you turn on their defensive tape, what sticks out? Yeah, no, again, they've got a lot of guys that have played a lot of ball for them. Uh, they do, they've had some injuries, just like, you know, a lot of teams have had injuries, but uh, they really played well, uh, obviously, this past week, um, you know, against Marshall and uh, a lot of the things there that, you know, certainly they're going to build on. But um, again, they're going to make you earn it. Uh, they, they've done a good job. Um, you know, they're a good tackling football team. They do a good job of limiting uh, the explosive plays. And, um, you know, it's for us, we got to come out and we got to be able to establish a run and we got to build everything else off that we talked about Keith and Sean being inducted into the Ball State Athletics Hall of Fame just from your perspective how awesome is it to see two more legends go into the Hall of Fame class for football yeah it's awesome and obviously I wasn't here uh, during their playing days but I was able to watch from afar just to see uh, the production and the careers that those guys had while they were here at Ball State is awesome man um, couldn't be more proud for both of those guys I know uh, how awesome that honor is man and you know just to see all the hard work and to see your, your university uh, recognize that you're deserving of of, of this type of honor uh, there's nothing like it and so I uh, you know I'm, I'm so happy for those guys and I hope they enjoy every second of it and um, we got to do our part to make sure uh, that the Hall of Fame ceremony this weekend is capped off with a win uh, by our football program against Western Michigan but uh, so proud for those guys and you know to see all their hard work pay off and um, you know being able to represent Ball State in such a flirt first class way during their time here as players and now uh, what they're doing with their respective careers. Mike, we appreciate you always joining us here on This Week in Ball State Sports. Thank you and good luck Saturday. Okay, appreciate you having me. Thanks for listening to This Week in Ball State Sports, presented by GameBridge. The preceding has been a Learfield presentation on the GameBridge Ball State Cardinals Sports Network.